Welcome to the video guys. I will be reviewing GCSE Edexcel paper number one. If you're new to the channel, I would really appreciate if you could go and drop this video a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Now, a quick note here, if you're expecting to see questions, then I won't be able to show you these questions for obvious reasons. What I'm gonna be doing is discussing the difficulty of the paper, um, any particular questions that threw people off, and just generally giving you a feel of what the student community have already expressed their feelings about for this paper. Now, this video will specifically be looking at the higher paper. So what I found was that the first seven questions of the higher paper carried a total of 26 marks. So if you are a student who just answered the first seven questions really well, this amounts to around 33% of the paper, which based on previous year's grade boundaries is around a grade five. So you could actually secure your, your grade five just by answering the first seven questions. So if you did that, well done to you. Now, the reason I share this is because sometimes there are students out there who are, you know, average students, so let's call them average without meaning any offense to anybody. And they're looking for those grade five, grade sixes. If you were to just get those first seven questions correct and you look at the rest of the paper, there were enough mechanical questions. And what I mean by this is questions that don't really change from how you learn them in class. For example, you've got the simultaneous equations. Uh, you've got, that was number 10. You've got the reverse mean, question eight. You've got the triple expansion of the brackets. Question 15, area of sectors and question 17 thirds, there were more or less mechanical questions, meaning like we've seen them in past papers, uh, there's no really thinking behind it. If you know how to do those topics, if you know how to access those sort of questions, then you can go get further marks from there, boosting up that grade five to even a higher grade. So this is why I say to my students that depending on what kind of grade you're targeting, target specific questions on the paper, and then use that as a platform to go and get the other questions like you might even not need to even get all of the marks of those questions just get maybe two out of the three marks or even one out of the three marks and this accumulates and boosts your overall mark and obviously your overall grade so that is something that i really recommend especially if you're a student who's not in year 11 and you're going to be doing your exam the following year then this is something that you could be looking at and working towards first of all i will share with you some of the reactions that i got from the student community um, most of the students that I asked, that I encountered, that I spoke to, told me that the paper was challenging in some aspects, but it was good, they said. And, you know, one particular student I will use as an example was someone who's aiming for a grade nine. And they said to me that, you know, it was good paper, except the last, I think there were two questions. One of them was the last one with the circles. So let's start with that, right? So with the circle, it was, uh, I mean... Look, you wouldn't have really practiced this much. I don't think as a GCSE student, you'll be doing lots and lots of these types of questions because you're going to be focusing on simultaneous equations, factorizing, you know, all of the other stuff. So you won't have looked at it much, but it wasn't that difficult. All right. It wasn't really, if I'm honest with you. So this was one of the questions that was picked up. But lots of other students talked about this ratio question and this jar question. So if I look at that question, I mean, Lots of people were sharing answers. I'm not going to share any answers here. That was a little bit, you need to think outside the box. It wasn't your, um, you know, question which was straightforward ratio here and there, but it was doable. You know, if you're, I mean, I was quite surprised that it was actually question number seven. That's the only thing that came as a surprise. I would have expected a question like that to be later on in the uh, exam paper. But I mean, you know, the thing I said in, in, in my previous video where, we, you've got these ratios and you're always looking for that middle term. Yeah, the middle thing that you have to sort of find the lowest common multiple. That was it. That was there. So, I mean, I spoke to my colleague and he was, he, he shared this with me. He said that if the average student kept on looking at predicted papers and only revising those topics, well, when those topics don't come up, they don't know what else to do because they're kind of like expecting only those topics to come up. And this is why you should do a variety of, of revision and also a variety of predicted papers because it's hard for anyone to predict that first paper. It's e it becomes easier to make predictions on paper two, having seen paper one, to make predictions for paper three, having seen papers one and two. It's easier to do that. But if you're making a predicted paper from the very beginning, then it's very hard to predict that first paper because as I mentioned earlier in another video as well, that some questions 
can appear across all free papers. Sometimes a calculator question can become a non-calculator question depending on the kind of numbers that they use. So this is a point to note as well. The other question that someone mentioned, and it was only one person here, uh, was histograms, and that was number 13. I, I took a look at this question, and the first part was very mechanical, very histogrammy. Obviously, you have to do those uh, numbers in your head and draw the histogram. But the second part of the question required you to find the areas of the bars and put them together. That may have been quite challenging for a number of students because if you know, maybe they just practice on how to draw a histogram. I mean, you've got students out there who confuse a histogram with bar charts. You know, when they're asked to draw a histogram, they end up drawing a bar chart. So if those are the kind of students attempting to do the part B, then they will struggle with that. And I think, I believe it was around three marks. Uh, that question. Another talked about question was question number 20 where you had uh, the indices. I mean this question was unusual indices question. You had to s sort of work things out outside of the your normal how you would d deal with indices but I have seen this appear on a number of uh, people's predicted papers uh, these types of questions. The MME one was uh, something that comes to mind where they had a number of questions where you're breaking up and you're representing them in a particular way but this one went beyond that. It had this x plus y thing where you're making an equation and you're getting your values and substituting it in and then finally coming out with the value of n. So that was a little bit outside of the ordinary. Now another one that some students talked about is question number 19, similar shapes with the two triangles which are isosceles triangles. Some students may not have been able to break up those triangles and find the corresponding side and marry them up, match them. So that would have been a struggle but if you had gone past that then the other parts they would flow but it was quite an unusual one where you deal with scale factors and find the sides that you need and especially using all the uh, letterings or the X's and the Y's that's something you have to insert in there that was quite challenging um, so th th that's another one that some students it was an easy topic like otherwise if you look at similar shapes uh, and triangles and, and questions of the like you're you know you've got you've been given the uh, the triangles you're breaking them up into two different triangles and you find the corresponding sides find the scale factor multiply by something to get the other side all straightforward but this one a little bit outside of the ordinary and it challenged some students here however the overall verdict on this paper I know some of you guys were saying some funny stuff like Edexcel did you dirty and all of that I felt it was a good paper I felt there was enough questions in there and I'm not just say, thinking and saying this as a math teacher you know I do try to put myself in your shoes guys you know how you guys would think and um, this is what we do uh, you know as teachers we have to think like you and how you look at problems and how you break down problems but there were enough mechanical questions and things that if you had prepared for you know your if you had done your revision if, if that was solid then you know there was enough there to give you I would say an average student a decent student I, I, you know that's subjective isn't it what's average and what's not grade seven I would say you could easily get a grade seven on this lots of my students like I said came out the exam and they were quite happy with it Nobody said I hated it. Nobody actually said I hated it. And I'm only speaking uh, on, on behalf of my students here. Um, nobody said they hated it. They said it was tough. Some students said it was tough. Some students said it was wonderful. No problem. They're looking forward to the other two papers. And this is something that I want to conclude with. I want to give you guys a list of topics that did not come up on paper one that I really feel that you should revise. So check these out. So write these down, guys, if you want to get a pen and paper. Um, vectors, definitely look at vectors. Uh, that was something that didn't come up. I would really recommend you do that. Algebraic fractions. Now, there was a question in probability with algebraic fractions, uh, but algebraic fractions on its own hasn't come up. And we're talking about, you know, like when you get given a fraction and you have to factorize the numerator and the denominator cancel stuff out, or you've got two fractions where you are adding them or multiplying them and you're trying to cancel things out again, you know, or solving it for that matter. Okay, so work on algebraic fractions. The third thing, circle theorems. Circle theorems wasn't there, so practice circle theorems, maybe proof of circle theorems. Trigonometry, there was no trigonometry there. Sine rule, cosine rule, a sine area rule, even the normal Soka Toa, that wasn't there, so prepare for that. And again, that is more uh, befitting of a, a calculator paper as well. Pythagoras, that didn't come up. Possibly 3D Pythagoras, that's something that you should prepare for as well. Uh, there was probability on this paper, but there were no probability tree diagrams. Uh, quadratic equations. Uh, well, was there a quadratic? Oh, I can't remember now. Well, the quadratic formula, right? Make sure you prepare for that at least. Uh, completing the square. 
um, inequalities. You know, there were no inequalities there. Although the foundation students, they had an inequality question, the last one. Um, but you guys, make sure you prepare for your inequality questions as well. We've got graphical inequalities. You know, you've got the shading of the regions and that. You've got the quadratic and the linear inequalities. Uh, prepare for that perhaps. Or just quadratic inequalities where you have to find the range of values. Functions, functions wasn't there, so make sure you practice your functions, composite functions, inverse functions, solving functions. And lastly, cumulative frequency graphs. Actually, I, when I say lastly, I don't mean lastly because these are all that I could think of uh, off the top of my head that I quickly noted down. So that's my review, guys, for paper one. Uh, let me know how you found it. Do share your thoughts in the comments. If you're a student who found this paper difficult and challenging, don't forget you got papers two and three to work towards. Your overall mark will be given as an accumulation of all three papers. So remember that. So so keep working, don't let it put you down. And if you're a student that perhaps found it quite easy, um, you know, this was a good paper for you, then, you know, look for any curveballs coming up in papers two and three, because we haven't had our Hannah problem or, you know, those one question that everybody talks about. Nothing really stuck out for me on this paper. Um, so, you know, expect the unexpected, I would say. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Until the next one, goodbye for now.